To be honest, the software compares to something like this with the LCD tablet uh, that I have for my two and a half year old. Etch a sketch level. So Amazon released the Kindle Scribe. It combines your Kindle books with an e-ink paper tablet, allowing you to take notes and create notebooks. In today's video, we're going to give you a full guide and my own experience from using this for around about 30 days now. I'm a Remarkable 2 user, so there will be two additional videos that will come along with this one. A full walkthrough of the Kindle Scribe from start to finish, and also a Remarkable 2 versus Kindle Scribe video, which you can find both linked below, as well as our brand new store to help you go deeper with the Kindle Scribe and Remarkable all linked in the description below. So let's get started with this Kindle Scribe. Now I've been using it for about 30 days now, got sent over from in November when it got launched. And to be honest, my overall impressions are that it's a good Kindle experience with a lackluster of software. So I wanna start with the design and hardware. To be honest, the experience of this is really nice. It feels like a good build quality. And it is weird having or going from a Kindle that I have, that's a traditional Kindle size, to something much larger. It is very much a small iPad or what they would consider the regular size iPad size, but it is also very, very thin, produ producing a pretty nice build quality on the back with a sort of nice regular sort of metallic -y finish with the Amazon logo. Now, a few things I noticed. This isn't the size of Kindle that you would expect to bring to bed with you. Reading this in bed was quite weird. Although you do have a small area for your thumb to rest, being able to hold this will take some getting used to. And I noticed when I was reading in bed, there were a couple of times where I was like, I feel a bit silly with this like this, because it's so big, but it actually got used to it in a while. I did actually attempt to bring this to the gym and it did also feel way too big. But if you are on something like a treadmill and you like reading on there, then it's not too bad because the size of it actually compensates and makes it a little bit easier to read. So in terms of some of the other hardware elements, there is the button on this side and charging on this side too. And aside from that, there's not really many other ports. And it does come with some accessories, which I'll mention later in the pricing elements of this video. But overall, being able to access it has been fairly easy to get used to, even though I've been coming from a remarkable experience. And final note on some of the hardware elements is there are these little nodules on the back. They're quite large if you compare them to the Remarkable 2, but they do provide a little bit of distance from a table that you place it on and the actual writing experience. So that does help to lift the device and make sure that the back doesn't get too scratched up. Although the surface of the back is natural, probably going to pick up some fingerprints. I know this is very... Uh, a fingerprint magnet and also and maybe a few scratches as time goes on. So the software side of stuff is pretty impressive with this because you get your entire Kindle library all condensed into this experience, which is really nice to bring along. It's been great being able to take some physical notes along with it whilst writing and being able to um, read a book, which is really weird to have alongside it. But the notebook experience really does lack a lot of things. Now, you can create notebooks and you can create as many pages as you like in this. And what's great is it does have a decent amount of storage. But my biggest problem with this experience is once you're inside of a sketching experience, the actual sketching, you've only got like four major functions. 
pen, highlighter, eraser, and, and being able to touch around the screen, and that's it. Whereas coming from a uh, solid hardware and um, solid software experience when, with a remarkable one and two, you really lack a lot of abilities here. Now, this is probably because Amazon wanted to rush this out before the Christmas launch, and they probably didn't naturally include this, but it really does make this note-taking experience very, very basic. And it's something to note here as well. Actually, this isn't a big problem because Amazon can push an over-the-air update to bring the software up and better back to life. But it's probably going to take a fair few efforts at this, at least getting it up to scratch with what the Remarkable has. So some of the additional things to note that I didn't mention in hardware is that the pen clicks into the side, but its experience of being able to click it in isn't necessarily fantastic. It doesn't feel as secure, and I noticed a couple of times it did fall off when just taking it out of my bag. So, daily use. Obviously, I've been using this for 30 days now, and one of the things I want to say about this is the screen quality is outstanding. I can read full-size Kindle books on here, and actually reading them has been a really nice experience. The, I think it's DPI or PPI, pixels per inch, has been a really high quality. And reading books has been a lot nicer in comparison with the previous Kindle. And actually writing on here is very fixed. It feels very clear and concise when I'm using the pen to sketch stuff out. The other thing that's outstanding about this device is the backlight. The backlight is so impressive and it comes with a really high level of brightness and additionally, a schedule setting for warmth as well. You can turn this to a really warm looking Kindle and that's perfect for bedtimes, especially when you set the schedule up to calm yourself as you go into the later hours and you are reading. But the brightness is also really nice for the notebook experience and that is definitely a separator from other uh, paper tablets that are out there right now. So I think I mentioned it there. Actually annotating on top of a Kindle book is really cool. You can highlight stuff and you can actually write these little sketch notes over the top of it, but it doesn't actually interface with the Kindle book. It only overlays it as an annotation summary, which is really nice because you don't get a messy ebook experience, which you might get with other paper tablets right now but it does offer a really nice experience overall. So in terms of the negative side of stuff from daily use, some feedback some people might say is the lack of notebook abilities. I was really unable to do a great deal that I was coming from the Remarkable over to this advice. But if your nature of using the Kindle Scribe is to use it for just annotating Kindle books and taking some light notes in a notebook, then this is gonna be a great option for you. But in terms of the abilities to send it on to uh, in detail, like in a PNG or things like that, uh, in a PDF, you're gonna lack that inside of this Kindle Scribe. The other thing as well, I find the pen feedback, despite it being the best quality of the range, is not great. It offers a good marker-like experience, but in terms of the actual quality of, for example, um, if I like lean the pen this way into a side, maybe a 45 degree angle, you don't get the quality that you would if you were trying to sketch something out. And that can be the difference between bringing an idea to life with a Kindle Scribe and not. So who is this best for? If you're looking for a new Kindle upgrade, you haven't got one in five or six years, and you're looking for a light bit of note taking on the side with a pen, this is gonna be a great bet for you. The accessories are really nice for this. You can buy an accessory that allows you to prop, prop it up, especially when you're writing in a coffee shop or at home and you want it to have a slight angle when you're writing or sketching, that's a really nice ability. So accessories I really do like, although the build quality on them is not as good as some of the others, but I'm sure with Amazon's pack store, they're gonna offer some better accessories out there. The only thing Kindle need to do to make this a competitive e-ink paper tablet is really to upgrade the software. And that's probably gonna take a little bit of time, 
but something that they definitely can do. In one of the videos that we will prepare with this, we'll do a full walkthrough of the Kindle Scribe to give you an idea of what it's like day-to-day -day uses, and I will give some feedback and also running commentary on each feature that works throughout that. So if you wanna see that video, feel free to check that out below, as well as a Remarkable 2 full comparison video. As somebody who uses Remarkable, I probably wouldn't transfer over to this. And to be honest, the software compares to something like this with the LCD tablet uh, that I have for my two and a half year old. Etch-a-sketch level, no, not quite, but very similar in a fashion because it's very much an MVP of this note-taking abilities. So folks, hopefully you found this video of the Kindle Scribe useful. As somebody that's really interested in e-ink displays, this has got a long way to go, but it's definitely replaced my option as a Kindle experience, just because it produces a really good one for that. If you want to dive into my remarkable reviews, you can find that video below, but I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And if you found value from this video, please hit the like button as well. So do join us here on Keep Productive and I look forward to seeing you in a future videos. Cheerio folks.